Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron with the Life Application Study Bible New Living Translation. I had this given to me by the good folks up at Livingstone Corporation. Man, they are doing more. They, they know how to do study Bibles at Livingstone. If you ever want to get a study Bible done, it is worth your time and money to get a hold of Bruce Barton and Dave Veerman at Livingstone. And they're the ones that for Youth for Christ, years ago, they they came out with a life application. It may still be the best-selling study Bible in the world today. I think they've had over 50 million copies sold to date. They've come out with a student edition of this. And this is just very well done. You know, I'm not a big fan of the New Living Translation, but the study Bible itself is fantastic. Now, I do want to give kudos for, I, I like this setup. It has this dust jacket over a a dust box for the hardback. I thought that was very well done. I like the color scheme and also I don't know if you can hear it but it's it's a, a, a box. It's not smooth. It's like very firm, hard, hardboard. It's not going to get disjointed. It's, you know, this is not going to rip apart. This is not just something that's going to fall apart. This is something a quality, like an Easton Press, a Franklin Press book is going to come in something like this. And so it is with the study Bible itself. A little green tree on the front. I don't know. This looks like maybe it's some kind of deluxe edition. It's got dual ribbon markers here. But this is... This is also, I hope I'm not like scratching on it. But, you know, this is not like smooth. This is like you find very well-made books made out of. And you can see that it's got the gold edging, an excellent gold edging. And how often on a hardback do you see dual ribbon markers? I'm, I'm for multiple ribbon markers. <laughs> There's a, if you go on eBay, there's a Marine's wife that was selling ribbon markers. They're like $3.49, $3.79, free shipping, if I remember, that she slipped down in here. And it's like six, and she does an amazing job. I bought them. I use them in some of my Bibles. But look at that. That's, that's like a classic book. You know, if you're getting Gulliver's Travels or something, you're, you know, this is the same thing that you're getting. This is the uh, great books of the Western world. Excellent little pages in the front, glossy. Makes this timeless. It also helps the spine. Don't ever try to rip this like it doesn't fully disengage right here. That's meant to be like that. It, it firms up the spine. It's not a mistake in printing. So this is just a deluxe edition. Again, many thanks to the folks at Livingstone, Dave and Bruce. They're some of the best folks around. Introduction to the New Living Translation. You would know that that came from the Living Bible by Kenneth Taylor. That's where Tyndall House Publishing came from. Here's Now, we're just going to, if you're not acquainted with the Life Application Bible, when I did What's the Best Study Bible, it's got, I think, it's several thousand views now on YouTube. I came to the conclusion that overall, the life application. Now, the Thompson Chain's great. The Dakes is great. Any number are fed. The Holman, Full Color, King James is phenomenal. I'm um, going to be doing a review on the ESV Systematic Theology Study Bible, which I'm a big believer in systematic theology, even though it can be used for all. But just overall... If you're just hunting for a good study Bible for somebody, the only thing is it's a little big, and that's all. And the print's a little small. But the timeline. So when you get to the Bible, this is one of the beauties of the life application, is the minute you get to the Bible, before you get to the introduction for Genesis or anything, it's showing you, it's giving you a timeline of the Bible. That is so fantastic. And so it's still giving you, and it'll give you sometimes like maybe secular history too. If I'm not mistaken, I'm going to double check that in just a minute. 
yeah, like the founding of Carthage or Phoenician trading post, 814, development of the K system in India, Babylonian and Chinese astronomers. So, you know, that's happening at the same time Jonah becomes a prophet. So that's just great stuff to know and helps you in teaching as well. The destruction of Troy, 1183, is at the same time, basically within a few years, as Gideon becomes Israel's judge. Um, so, I mean, just neat stuff like that. And uh, Esther becomes queen very close to the same time. Uh, first time Greek men choose short haircuts which I need, Lord willing, a haircut tomorrow. And so then as you get into the book, here's how the book is set up. It's going to give you a timeline for that book. And then great introductions. The timelines, the, I felt like they were very economical. In When I mean economical, I'm not talking about cheap. I'm talking about in their pagination. That they fit so much on a page without it appearing crowded. So these chronologies tell you, you know, the first uh, 2,000 years of human history are found in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And uh, great introductions, fantastic outlines, and then it's going to have mega themes. Again, this was originally done for Youth for Christ. Author Moses. See, I love that. Date written 1450 to 1410. I would say 1490, but it's still an old dating system. So it's very conservative in its dating system. Now, here's another thing you get into. Every book, unless it's a book that doesn't need this, it's going to give you a map, all your key places. And so you're going to be able to see, oh, so Abraham traveled from here, or up to Haran, down to here, down to Canaan, down into Egypt. It, phenomenal. Great stuff. So the major places in every book, it's not just for Genesis. And uh, then amazing amount of commentary. Now look at this down here. It's going to give you kind of an outline of everything that's going to follow. Before you get into the amazing amount of commentary this has. This has incredible amounts of commentary. And then the reference system is single column, so easy to use. You know, so many people don't use center column references in their Bible because they look at it and they're like, well, that is a jumbled mess. You know, I know you bibliophiles out there do, you're, you know, but I'm talking about just average folks. You know, we just struggle with that. So look at this. Everything about this Bible is set up so amazing. From the side column references to the incredible amount of notes. The, the notes go from theology to history to archaeology to, as the title says, the life application. What does this have to do with me? I'm glad I'm reading about Rebecca, but is there something I can learn from Rebecca's life? And just wait, because we're about to get into the character sketches that are this phenomenal blending of history, like the history of Adam, but then lessons from Adam's life, like obedience and disobedience and so many things, the caretakership of mankind. So lessons you can learn. These character studies are all over the place. Vital statistics, where, the Garden of Eden, occupation, caretaker, gardener, farmer, relatives, wife, Eve, son, Cain, Abel, Seth, numerous other children, the only man who never had an earthly mother or father. So cool stuff, key verses. Um, Adam's story is told here. He is also mentioned, and it gives all these other verses. Um, we can only imagine what it must have been like to be the first and only person on earth. Yes, we can only imagine that. And look at the number of notes. But yet it's not a big tome. Now, the print, they do make this in large print, but you're not going to be carrying that guy to church with you. And it's a big Bible. And a lot of people don't even like it this size. This is a well done Bible. Like you get to Eve, 
And when I just said this is a well done Bible, I'm also talking about the uh, just the quality of workmanship in this. Tyndale just did a fantastic job. So we'll take you to another book like Judges and show you how Judges looks at the beginning. So you can kind of get a feel. And Bruce and Dave were some of the big movers and shakers. They did most of this. Bruce Barton and Dave Veerman. One of the factoids of history, those of you that like Robbie Zacharias, Bruce Barton was his faculty advisor at uh, Trinity. So that's just a factoid of history. So you'll see the map. Now I'm going to show you another map on the next page. This is a map of where you're going to be at in Judges. But I'm going to show you another map on the next page that every time, and this does this throughout the entire Bible, every time you change location in the text, they give you a fresh map and show you where you're at. I don't know of another study Bible that does that. Usually maps are afterthoughts at the back of the Bible. These are all in text. Absolutely. And this is the reason I said, you know, everybody's got their favorite study Bibles. But I think that just, I had a student from IBC just say, if, if you had to pin me down, what would be your favorite study Bible? I said, with all things considered, um, the life application. Because just for preaching and teaching, like the lessons from the life of Solomon, their insights are just that. They're insights. It's like you're reading Chuck Swindoll and uh, Max Lucado all put together. Maybe with some Jeff Arnold and Raymond Woodward thrown in or something. And so you'll see maps and character studies on this. And here's one of these great ribbon markers. Absolutely perfect size. Green matches the Bible. Has a character study on Job I'm looking at. So let's get to, let's see if there's something between the, uh, the Testaments. Before we get there, I did want to just show you how it's set up. This is not the traditional two-column format. But they also cut off the pages. You know, there's a maximum number of words across. And this is how intricate getting Bibles, making Bibles, is how many words across can you read comfortably before it gets laborious and you lose things. Because you want to just short, go to the next. Short, go to the next. But not too short and go to the next. And so they just did a great job at that as well. I think it's, uh, is it 22 letters across? I think it's 22 letters is like the perfect line. People know more about it than I do. But uh, I think that's what it is. So let's see if there's something. Oh, yeah. The time between the Testaments. Got a good little four-page thing here. And then we get into Matthew. Matthew just shines. Wow. Look at this when you get to Matthew. You not only get the chronology, you get the vital statistics. I mean, so literally in 30 seconds, you can learn a ton about Matthew over in these vital statistics. Here's like, okay. And, and that's just one of the beauties of this. And so then you turn a page, and it's going to give you maps, where you're going to be at in Matthew. So look at that. There's references down at the bottom as well. And uh, then it starts all over again. It is not red letter. But it starts all over again with the character sketches. I'll turn a few pages here, Sister Francesca. We appreciate Sister Francesca filming these from church. She's a good Holy Ghost-filled girl. Hallelujah. And 
And so you can just see the dynamic here of the character sketches, the maps, changing places, you know, as you change places, there's a map, references, it's just so much information on each page. Now, with that being said, I also like, I did want to mention this, that a lot, it, it's obviously it's an evangelical study Bible, but it's not real sectarian. So I did appreciate that. And I said it wasn't red letter. So here I am in Revelation looking at red letter. It is red letter. My bad. Let me show you the red letter. That is my bad. I didn't think it was red letter. It's like a decent red letter. Red letter has to be done right or it can just be almost unreadable. I remember Cambridge back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, that's decent. Red letter. I'd say the print's probably eight and a half point print, something like that. Look at that journey through Acts. Wow. <laughs> Just amazing. Great escapes in the Bible. Jacob, Moses, Israelites, the spies, Ehud, Samson. Look, I mean, you just don't find that in Bibles. Great escapes in the Bible. And even what I was reading before about it, you, the journeys throughout the book of Acts, it was just uh, uh, most of a page taking you everywhere from the book of Acts. Paul's missionaries' journeys and, and all of that. And this is, again, Paul's missionary journey is another place where this is really going to shine. And uh, we get to the back. Ah, millennialism. So it is obviously not just a concordance. It is a topical index. So a Christian worker's reference guide in the back. How to become a Christian. God created you. God wants you to have a personal relationship with Him. God loves you. Um, how to follow up with a new believer. How to show your love for Jesus by doing what He says. Um, how to mine the treasures in the Life Application Bible. Memorized verses will give you comfort and help, help you in temptation. Uh, seeing the big picture of Jesus by using the harmony of the Gospels, a 365-day reading plan. And then this master index in the back, which is truly huge. And the print's decent. Again, so many people do the concordance as an afterthought and use really small print. Um, and I really don't like, like like the Cambridge or the Oxford concordances where they jumble it up or the Nelson uh, Study Bible 2 where it's kind of jumbled up. I, I do like the lines like this better. I've come to that conclusion. You may watch another video where I kind of say something a little different, but I've, I've really been studying that. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to go with this. This is much easier to use. There's quite a bit of ghosting. Then it has an NLT dictionary in concordance. And then great maps. And actually, one of the routes in the Exodus actually takes you through water, which is so rare in study Bibles. For some reason, they give the liberal study Bibles. Um, these actually look like Holman maps. I'm not sure if they are. I didn't read. Holman has some nice full-color maps. Abingdon has phenomenal maps. I've always appreciated the topogra topography of the uh, Holman maps. Uh, I'll just show you. Like this is a good full-page map. And that's going to be it. So the Life Application Study Bible. This happens to be in the New Living Translation. They make it or have made it, you know, King James, New King James, NASB, NIV. I'm not sure what in all other translations they make it in. And there's a lot of maps back here. I did want to mention that. Um, Ministry of Jesus. I really like that map. Um, show you two more of these maps that I find fascinating. This is the Ministry of Jesus map. And then, you know, I live here in Georgia. We're going to show you they actually have a thing of Israel compared to Georgia and Florida here. So 
So this study Bible hit a sweet spot, and I think that is shown by its, uh, its selling. It's still selling to this day. But they're coming out. This is really a golden age of study Bibles. And a lot of them, I don't really care for the translations, the CSB and the HCSB and the ESV. But the study Bibles themselves, even the complete Jewish study Bible, uh, the information is, I mean, truly, Daniel 12, 3 and 4 is coming to pass, that knowledge shall increase. Also, at the end, remember, this is not an error that that is supposed to kind of be hooked together, and that gives um, stability to the spine. Great job by Tyndale. God bless. Talk with you later.